So good morning, everyone. How's the Josh? Hi. Okay. Awesome. So welcome everyone to this meeting number sixty-eight of Mumbai Speakers Toastmasters Club. I'm Vishal Mehta, your Sergeant at Arms for today's meeting. I would first like to begin by stating the mission of a Toastmasters Club. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Now, I would like to mention the three ground rules that we follow in Toastmasters Club meeting. First, kindly switch off or put your phone in the silent mode. Second, refrain about top talking about the three taboo topics: politics, religion, and sex. Third, please do not cross talk while in the meeting. Now, since we are in the online Zoom meeting environment, there are a few instructions that we need to follow. All the speakers and role bearers are requested to prefix their role to their name if they have not already done so. So it's easy to identify them. All speakers are requested to do a quick audio and video check before they start their speech. I request the speakers to also confirm that they can see the timer cards before starting their speech. I would request you not to type in the chat box when a speaker is speaking, as it may disturb the speaker. You can use the private chat to provide your personalized feedback. Do not click on the shared screen button unless your speech or role requires you to do so. You can display a high five or a namaste when taking over or leaving from a role. You can connect with me for any technical glitch. I'm also the Zoom master for today's meeting. This meeting is being recorded. In case you have any reservations on your speech being recorded, please let us know and we will pause the recording. There are a couple of ways of giving applause. If your video is on, you may clap like this, or you may use the reaction button on your Zoom screen and click the clap icon. Today, we have a very innovative and interesting session lined up. So let's get started. Now, it's my privilege and pleasure to welcome the presiding officer of the day. She's fun-loving, hardworking, and an adventurous person and she loves taking on new and exciting challenges. With thunderous applause, let us welcome the president of our club and the presiding officer for today's meeting, Toastmaster Sarika. Over to you, presiding officer Sarika. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Adam. And our VP Ed Vishal. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters, and a warm welcome to uh, the guest present here. It's my privilege to welcome you all on behalf of Mumbai Speakers Club. Today in the morning, I was just reading an article and the article said that Deepak Parekh bought a smartphone during the lockdown. Now you would be wondering what is so strange about this, that Deepak Parekh is, if everybody's aware, he's the ex-chairman of HDFC, the man behind HDFC Bank. And finally, he bought a smartphone. So till now, he was always using a phone uh, which was only used for calling and sending me uh, text messages. But then finally, he realized that in the lockdown that he needs a smartphone. So ideally, uh, Chandra, who's uh, Tata Sun's chairman, he actually mentioned that finally, this is a benchmark of digital adoption. And it is in today's business today only. So Deepak Parekh finally buying a smartphone means that it's a benchmark that finally people, rich or poor, uh, a stature of you know any kind has to adopt digitally. And how important is digital adoption, digital transformation? So and today's theme was exactly like that. And I'm not going to dwell much on the theme because I want the Toastmaster of the day to run us through, but every for every success, digital 
adopting to the new technology adopting to the digital era is a must otherwise you will be you will stay back and this the 77 year old deepak parekh realized now so uh, i am and now is my privilege to introduce the most um, hard working and our uh, seasoned toastmaster a uh, very senior uh, toastmaster of uh, you know our of our club and he is there since inception and it's privilege to hear from uh, uh walter who's our toastmaster of the day on a different subject i'm not going to reveal the topic because i want him to do it but it's related to the digital era that i was just mentioned about and uh, yeah over to you toastmaster of the day walter the stage is all yours thank you thank you thank you so much uh... Sorry, 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 sorry to interrupt. Can you, yeah, you want to sorry. like introduce the guests? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I I just saw that there are two guests earlier. It wasn't there. So Ajit and Harshil. Ajit, hey, hi. hi Ajit. Hi. Yeah, hi. Hi. Welcome to Toastmaster. Welcome to Mumbai Speakers Club. Thank Maybe you. Maybe you want you. to just quickly brief that how did you get to know about the club and uh, what got you here. Uh, sorry maybe a brief introduction of you know how did you got to know about this club and what brought you here today so yeah so my name is ajit panike i work for tcs uh, okay so uh, uh, in tcs there is a toastmaster already club right so mm -hmm. i just my few of the colleagues is already there in the toastmaster uh, uh, across the globe not the globe within the india uh, in kolkata uh, mumbai uh, okay and uh, just i wanted to improve my communication skill that is what i just joined this club uh, so one of my colleagues said that uh, you can join you don't need to join within the tcs itself you can join nearby club so i just search nearby club i stay in the mira road so i i just joined this club nice i think you are at the right place ajit hope you enjoy the meeting today and uh, have a first hand experience about what we conduct in the meeting and how our public speaking skills get improved we also have uh, i think harshil was there guest harshil oh, sarika i think uh, toastmaster sandeep had logged in with a different device so there is no oh, okay 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 yeah extremely sorry actually sarika this was my son's laptop so my son's no name, name is harshil yeah no worries yeah. no worries okay so mid without much uh delay and further ado let me hand over the stage to toastmaster of the day walter the stage is all yours over to you walter thank you thank you so much uh, presiding officer or toastmaster sarika uh, for your kind and benevolent introductions i uh, hope i am audible and visible uh good morning fellow toastmasters and my dear guest i am walter crasto your tmod today for today's meeting we started learning with a for apple b for ball and c for cat and now we have come long way since then today a stand for artificial intelligence b for blockchain and c means cryptocurrency in last year one of my tmod session i have talked about the industrial revolution the first industrial revolution that is uh, invention of steam engine second one when electricity and a bulb was invented and third industrial revolution where we are living it today which is uh, started by um, in 1950 around 1950 when ibm invented the mainframe and then personal computers and then the telecom revolution web uh, internet and then the mobile telephony all this thing is a part of the industrial revolution 3 and now today we are on the verge of fourth industrial revolution powered by artificial intelligence machine learning virtual reality metaverse nanotechnologies genetic engineering iot's powered by the cloud computing high performance uh, mobile devices and 5g connectivity the boundaries between physical biological and digital worlds are going to be blurred out sooner or later and one of the prominent technology in this whole suit of emerging technologies is a blockchain so today i am going to talk about this blockchain before we further proceed truth to be told i am not a blockchain expert so i will encourage anyone who knows more on this topic they can intervene 
and share their knowledge as well. That will benefit to all of us. So blockchain is incredibly popular nowadays. What is a blockchain? How it works? And what are the problem it solves? We are going to see in today's session. Like name indicates, blockchain is a chain of blocks that contains the information. This technique was originally described in 1991 by a group of researchers. Their intention was to timestamp the document so that it is not possible to backdate the documents or tamper the document, almost like notary. However, it went unused until it was adapted by Santoshi Nakamoto in 2009 to create digital cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. So I will take a pause here. Just wanted to ask the audience, anyone know who is a Santoshi Nakamoto? Hello. No idea. Yeah. No idea. Okay. 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 Fine. Fair enough. Good. So Santoshi Nakamoto is pseudonym used by a person or maybe a group of people who has developed the Bitcoin, authored the Bitcoin white papers and created and deployed the Bitcoin's original implementation. As a part of implementation, Nakamoto also devised the first blockchain database. So just wanted to clarify over here, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. Blockchain is a platform used for the deployment of this Bitcoin application or cryptocurrency application. Okay. So blockchain is a platform which is used. So Ethereum blockchain is different. Bitcoin blockchain is also different. Okay. So Santoshi Nakamoto was active in development of Bitcoin until December 2010. There has been widespread speculation about Santoshi Nakamoto's true identity. Though Nakamoto's name is Japanese and he stated in 2012 that he is a man living in Japan. Most of the speculation has involved around the software and cryptography expert uh, from United States and Europe. Nakamoto has uh, stated that he has started writing code of Bitcoin in 2007. On August 18, 2008, they registered bitcoin.org domain and the published website over there. On October 31st, 2008, Nakamoto published the digital cryptocurrency uh, describing what is a digital cryptocurrency, uh, titled called Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And on 9th January, 2009, Nakamoto released the first version of the Bitcoin software, 0.1 version of the Bitcoin software on Salesforce, uh, SourceForge and launched the network defining the first block of the Bitcoin or blockchain, first block of the blockchain used for Bitcoin cryptocurrency. And he had transferred 50 Bitcoins on uh, during these transactions. Okay. Nakamoto continued to collaborate with the other developers on the Bitcoin software until the mid of 2010, making all the modification to the source code himself. And then he gave control of source code repository and network alerts to Gavin Anderson, transferred several related domain and various prominent uh, uh, domain related uh, rights to the various prominent members of the Bitcoin community and stopped his recognized involvement in this project. Santoshi Nakamoto has never revealed the personal information when discussing the technical matter. On peer-to-peer -peer network foundation profile, as of 2012, Nakamoto is claimed to be a 37-year-old male who lived in Japan. However, many speculators has unlikely said that he is unlikely to be a Japanese due to his native use of English language and considering his timestamp of post on the community forum, which shows that no post during 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. of Japan standard time, which is unusual shipping time for a person living in Japan. The researcher involved in this project, including Gavin Anderson and Dan Kamensky and so many others, consider that Nakamoto might be a team of people or he might be a very genius or brilliant coder. So that's a brief history of these Bitcoin. I will take a pause over here. In subsequent session, we'll see how blockchain works and what are the use cases of blockchain? So I will take a pause here and we will move it to the, let me quickly explain, move it to the three sessions of our today's meeting. So let me quickly explain the flow of the meeting for the benefit of our guests. 
today uh, we will be having three sessions in the first session will be consisting of the prepared speeches today we'll be having two prepared speeches based on the uh, objectives of the respective speakers pathway then the second session will be a impromptu speaking or table topic session where you will be learn to think fast and speak on the cuff i encourage all the guests to take part in this dynamic session it is extremely exciting and fun filled session the third part of the meeting is evaluation session where the uh, prepared speeches will be evaluated by the experienced member and a feedback will be given to the uh, speakers as well as a uh, overall evaluation of the uh, general evaluation will be done of the meeting overall per se so as a toastmaster of the day it's my duty to introduce the role bearers who will be assisting me in the running of today's session to keep track of time spent by each speaker please help me welcome the timer of today's meeting toastmaster parimal may i call upon toastmaster parimal to give the objective of his role as a timer of today's meeting over to you toastmaster parimal thank you team modi uh, good morning fellow toastmasters and yes uh, my role as a timer to keep time for all the speakers so they can ensure to complete their speeches within allotted time slots uh, for prepared speech we have 4 to 6 minutes of time slot i have uh, three color cards i will show green card when a uh, speaker reach to fourth minute that is the qualifying time i will show the yellow card when speaker will reach to that uh, target time and uh, i will show the red card when the speaker reach to the uh, allotted fi final time uh, uh, there is a grace period of 30 second on either side of the speeches so uh, minimum uh, qualifying time is 3 minute 30 seconds i will show the report at the end of the speeches uh, thank you and back to pm modi thank you thank you so much toastmaster parimal for your detailed uh, briefing of the rule to track the good and not so good usage of grammar we have grammarian of the day toastmaster brijesh may i call upon toastmaster brijesh to give the objective of his role as a grammarian over to you toastmaster brijesh hello sorry yeah. i was on mute yeah thank you toastmaster of the day uh, walter sir yeah as grammarian it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all speakers listening carefully to their language usage i'll take note of not so correct usage as well as good ex uh, examples of good usage of the english language as a grammarian it is my duty to introduce word of the day for today's meeting the word for today is crumble uh, which means to fall apart to break into pieces an example of using a word is if the foundations of building are not strong it will crumble upon very soon i would request every speaker today to uh, use the word of the day uh, in the right context and also i would request audience to show a thumbs up uh, whenever uh, anyone makes correct usage of the word yeah thank you over to you toastmaster of the day thank you thank you so much toastmaster brijesh so to keep a track of ahs and ums during the meeting we have our counter of the day toastmaster avani so may i call upon toastmaster avani to give the objective of her role as a counter over am to I you audible? toastmaster yeah am i audible yeah uh thank you toastmaster walter uh good morning fellow toastmasters and guest uh i am avni and i'm going to play the role of our counter in today's meeting uh so the purpose of our counter is to count us which is as simple as it is uh now what does us signify so this will include three types or three categories of words and sounds that we generally use as filler words or try to insert it in the phrases where either we pause for a while or uh there is a there is a breakage in the way we think or while we are thinking the filler words that we use so the first category would include include all the sounds which is a e m mm. the second category includes the extra words that we tend to use generally which is you know maybe but well and the third category is the repetition that we tend to make which i would also be making while i am speaking which is i i uh 
this means, this means. So all the repetition of words that we tend to do. So these are the three categories that are included in uh, our counter report. Uh, I want to pause for a while and ask someone to share that why should we avoid using filler words or words that I just described? Would anyone like to share that? Why are we doing this? Yeah, uh, so Brijesh here, uh, what generally happens is when you, uh, you know, use uh, filler words, the audience loses interest in your speech and uh, that actually, you know, defeats the purpose because you are here uh, providing your speech, uh, like giving up your speech to ensure that uh, you are able to capture the attention of audience, right? If you are not able to capture the attention, then your time is wasted. Mm. So, Thank you. Thank you so much, Pradesh. Actually, there was on point that one, to keep audience engaged. Two, it also shows the kind of if we want to include our communication and want to reach at the epitome of a good communicator. Generally, good communicators tend to avoid filler words or are very confident or they know what they are going to speak when they are going to speak. And it also shows a level of preparedness to some extent. So that's the reason why we are setting it as a practice and having this role in our meeting so that we are aware and we try to work on it with each meeting maybe with each conversation that we had so at the end of the at the end of this call i would be presenting a report of how many times these expressions are used i want to end it with a small intention setting that if we could do intention setting for ourselves that in today's meeting i'll try to avoid or be conscious of all the filler words or our words that I would be using whenever I speak. So a small intention setting, you can do it for yourself. Uh, thank you so much over to Toastmaster. Thank you, thank you so much. So thank you tag team for your uh, introduction of the rules. And now we'll begin with our first session of prepared switches. Each speech is from their selected pathways with certain fixed objective. That is why we call it as project. I request all the speaker to check their audio and video and timer screen before they start their speech. For the first speech, I call upon Toastmaster Sandeep who will be delivering his L1P2 speech. May I request his evaluator Toastmaster Joy to kindly read out the speech objective and time limits. Over to you Toastmaster Joy. Thank you, uh, Tiyomori Walter. My speaker, Toastmaster Sandeep, today will be attempting project two under level one of the effective coaching pathways. And the purpose of the speech is for Toastmaster Sandeep to learn or review basic methods for writing a speech with a defined purpose and to present a well-organized speech on any topic. Unfortunately, he's facing some tech issues today. Um, so he's unable to turn on the camera. So we'll be going ahead without the video. Timer, please note the speech uh, timing is between five to seven minutes. Thank you. And back to you, to you, Muri Walter. Thank you. Thank you so much. Toastmaster Sandeep, power of habit, power of habit, Toastmaster Sandeep. Over to you, Toastmaster Sandeep. Uh, thank you, TMOD Walter. Uh, sorry, there's a technical glitch at me and then the camera is not working. Earlier, the audio was not working. The other uh, last laptop. Anyways, so there's a there's a famous quote from Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, he said, uh, "Your belief becomes your thought. Your thought becomes your words. Your words become your action. Your action become your habit. Your habit becomes your values, and the values become your destiny." It all starts with belief. It can make someone a Hitler, or it can make someone a Martin Luther King, or a Mahatma Gandhi, or a Nelson Mandela. Usually, our belief is guided by our experience, learnings, thoughts, background, and conditioning. But unfortunately, in the present time, our belief system is completely or maybe completely altered and guided by social media to a large extent. And this itself is good enough. And the later part of the quote, the same quote says, words become your action and action become your habit. So what is a habit? So habit is a recurrent of an unconscious pattern of behavior that is acquired through frequent repetition. It is an action, if you repeat it on a continual basis, it tends to take place in the subconscious mind and it and you know it 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 makes you know action happen naturally to you but the mood question is can we form a habit under any circumstance or at any age the answer is yes it is very much doable now the question is uh, how do we do with that so the first step is to identify the goal you want to achieve say out of the six pillars of your life 
for example, your, uh, your self, your family life, health, finances, social life, spiritual life, you choose health. You want to be healthy. Under health, you plan two broad actions that you want to work on. One is eat healthy food. Second is walking up, waking up early in the morning, every day. For both of these actions, you need to drill down and make them smart goals. So what is smart? Smart is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So the smart goal can be, I will have boiled vegetable five days a week for next three months. Second could be, I will wake up 4.30 in the morning for next three months. So this is specific, very smart. But these can still be tough to achieve when you start. So break these actions into mini habits and tiny habits. Uh, though I personally believe in massive action because that has worked for me, but mini habits work for everyone. It is said in one of, I mean, a few books that I've read on atomic habits and the power of habits. as well. Using the same example, the mini habits can be what? It can be have boiled vegetable just once a week instead of having it five times a week. Uh, waking up 15 minutes earlier than your usual time you wake up rather than going to wake up at 4.30 every morning and failing after three days. This can be very crumbling, very, crumbling, very disheartening. Uh, the 2190 rule states that it takes 21 days to form a habit and 90 days to make a habit a permanent lifestyle. And the success of habit formation will depend on the craving you have for that particular change you want to make in your life. The craving, the intensity, the depth you want to have. This is very important to know. I have included a few good habits uh, in the last uh, three months. And this has happened due to high craving for self-change or self-improvement in all the aspects of my life. I talked about the six pillars of my life. Uh, a few habits that I've uh, you know, introduced in, in the last few months are like going to gym every day for 40 minutes burning at least 400 calories every day. While walking on the treadmill, I use this entire 40 minutes for affirmation and visualization process to elevate the six pillars of my life. Now, affirmation and visualization, basically, it's, it's a huge subject again, and it's a game changer to change your belief and the, and the habits as well. Third is, I find it easy to read one book in a week, for which I have recently completed a speed uh, you know, reading mastery program to fine tune my reading skills. So the mood point here is, you have to take action. You have to take action and small tip towards small step towards your goal. The fourth point is I whenever I meet you know my milkman or my buildings watchman, my mate, my uh, office boy in office, I greet them. I know their names. I talk to them. I make them feel better. I give them you know hearty smile when I when I see them actually. And by doing this, I really feel absolutely energized, electrified, very positive, and very blessed. Now. Uh, let us understand about the bad habits and how they can be formed. So bad habits is like smoking, drinking, cheating, and uh, telling lies, for example. So these becomes you know part of a, a life as well sometimes. So is it easy to form bad habits? Yes, it is very easy to form bad habits. How? Now, now bad habits like cigarette and uh, you know hard drinks basically it gives you in instant gratification, satisfaction. It gives you instant pleasure, easy rewards. Brain wants similar action again and again and again. Brain re releases you know, the active chemicals into your body when it experiences the trigger or the cue. So I'll come to the trigger part later on. Uh, so on the other hand, uh, good habits takes time. It is very painful in the short term. It gives you, you know, it will not give you instant gratification or pleasure or satisfaction. So becoming healthy is a slow process. Reading, developing a reading habit is a very slow process. Now, can you change your bad habit? Yes, you can change your bad habit. How? Uh, you need to identify the trigger points or the cue. The trigger point basically, and the trigger basically, they create urge and you want to reward yourself when this happens. So the urge is to have cigarette. Okay. And you satisfy yourself by having a cigarette. Okay. Now let's go deeper and understand what is this trigger. This trigger point basically, it can be, it can be location, it can be people, it can be emotions, or it can be activities. So I'll give you some examples so that you can connect with it better. Uh, as soon as I enter my kitchen, I want to have junk food. So kitchen, it is a location-based trigger. When I'm, a, when I'm stressed, I want to have junk food. Stress, it is an emotion-based trigger. When I meet someone, I feel celebrating. I want to go for a party. For example, uh, with a friend, uh, uh, Lokesh, I meet him. When I meet him, I feel like going to uh, you know, uh, some place and have... So this is a... Meeting someone special is a people-based trigger. Sitting and watching TV, 
I want to watch, you know, uh, I want to watch with a popcorn or a tea. This is an activity based trigger. So you need to pay attention to this trigger points. You need to understand the psychological DP, psychological DP. How to overcome it? It's very easy. Basically, create a goal card for yourself. Create that urgency and that commitment towards that goal. Read it three times after breakfast, six times after lunch, and nine times before you sleep. This is called the Tesla method. Three is to six is to nine method. This is a proven method across the world. Many people use it. Successful people use it. Next, write new habits that you want to create and bad habits that you want to eliminate. In an Excel sheet, start taking action. Do it for 90 days. The Excel sheet is a tracking sheet where you track your performance every day. Or probably in a week, probably you, can, you have to see in what is the performance now. Have you done that activity? But every day noting is very, very important. I can share the tracking sheet if somebody wants. Uh, through the habits, basically, that you're forming, you can create value and the space for yourself for a period of time and decides how caring, helping, supporting people will be towards you based on their experience with you as a person. This is the power of habit. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Toastmaster Walter. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Sandeep. It was a great speech. And uh, certainly, we need your Excel file to do share that. Absolutely. Because all our life is crumbling. <laughs> so let's move on to the next. So for today's second speech, we have Toastmaster Ajay. Uh, he's delivering his level one P3 speech. And for his evaluation, let me call upon Toastmaster Vishal Mehta for kindly read out the speech objective. Over to you, Toastmaster Vishal Mehta. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, Walter. My speaker today, Toastmaster Ajay, will be delivering his level one project three under the pathway presentation mastery. The objective of his speech is to learn or review the basic research methods and present a well-organized, well-researched speech on any topic. Timer, please note that the time for the speech is five to seven minutes. I wish my speaker, Toastmaster Ajay, all the very best and hand it over to Toastmaster of the day, Walter. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Vishal. So, Toastmaster Ajay, uh, you can quickly check your audio video. Uh, Toastmaster Ajay. Please confirm yeah. if I'm visible and audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank so, you. Toastmaster Ajay, era of computer, AI versus human, which is essential. Era of computers, AI versus human, which is essential. Toastmaster Ajay Sharma, over to you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Walter. Very warm good morning to everyone and fellow Toastmaster and my dear guest. Human being and computers work differently. The computers were created to make human life easier as it was created by humans. Computer is a crumble as it is assembly gadgets consisting of different parts. When it comes to artificial intelligence, which is human brain, it is scientifically observed that artificial intelligence is more efficient than the human brain. As the time goes and passed, now human become completely dependent on computers. Human needs to interact with each other because communication is not possible without computers. Just assume our Zoom meeting without computer, without internet, could we able to communicate all together seamlessly, virtually, sitting at our home with our comfort? Absolutely no. Professor Stephen Hawking was an American theoretical physicist, cosmologist, and author. In November 2017, he said in the interview with Wired magazine, the genie is out of the bottle. We need to more move forward on artificial intelligence development, but we also need to be mindful of its very real dangers. A fear that AI may replace human altogether. If people begin computer viruses, someone will design AI that replicate itself. This will be a new form of life. Then it will outcome, outperform of humans. 
artificial intelligence is a branch of computer science and it's being developed to manage the technology by making decisions carrying out actions tasks on behalf of human being when development of any such kind of machine or a technology that can perform just like a human can do is known as artificial intelligence as per wikipedia in 1955 Mr John McCarthy was the first person who introduced AI name to the world he was an american computer scientist he had delivered speech on AI first time in 1956 he was also called as father of artificial intelligence humans are created of flesh and blood they have a life humans have emotions feelings they express different emotions at different times and computers work with the coded program and applications which is designed by human beings humans can understand the situation and respond whereas computers do not have the capability of understanding some of the examples of artificial intelligence firstly in apple and android devices siri and alexa is a virtual personal assistant worked on ai enabled technologies it can decode your command and produce the results instantly similarly cortana is a microsoft windows operating system worked on ai enabled technologies secondly we used google every day Google use huge variety of AI enabled technologies in most of the applications. Google Map is the best example. Via GPS, global positioning systems, it can trace the location and give you perfect directions for any destinations. And how it works in the what day to day applications we use every day. Your ride hailing applications like Ola, your Uber, your food delivery applications like Domino, your Swiggy, your Zomato. your pizza hut how it works it all works with the help of internet it all works it all works with the gps e-commerce online stores your amazon your flipkart your ott p applications ott p ott p apps your netflix your amazon prime how it works it works in the background via satellite internet and gps all together thirdly in china jack ma's alibaba group is open a futuristic 5g hotel in hangzhou it has 290 rooms and all are operated by robots and serving to their customers in daily in daily uh, in every day or 365 days every, every, every year in the every year fourthly like human ai enabled machines does not require require a rest of refreshment uh, rest or refreshment time for any work to perform machines can work constantly all together without any interference or rest ai enabled technologies are highly used in telecommunication sectors your defense sectors your disaster management and weather forecasting it all works computers have become a very important part of our lives and are helpful in many ways though it also had negative impact on our life as well there will be no competitions between humans and computers because humans are the creators of good thing or bad thing artificial intelligence is useful when it is used in human development in the field of healthcare sectors or in the agricultural productions enhancement this we can assume as a good thing artificial intelligence will be dangerous if in place of human if robots are used or deploy against any country in war then it is disasters of many human lives and crumble this we can assume as a bad thing do you really thought about it it will going to happen in future over to you postmaster of the day walter
थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच टोस्मासर जी फॉर दैट वंडरफुल स्पीच मै कॉल अपॉन द टाइमर टोस्मासर परिमल टू रीड आउट द टाइम्स टेकन बाय दिस स्पीच थैंक यू टीम मोडी टीएम अजय टुक एग्जैक्ट सेवन मिनट्स सो ही क्वालिफाई फॉर द रिवोल्यूशन एंड एंड फॉर टीएम संदीप took 7 minute 20 second considering uh, this grace period uh, grace period of 30 second we can say he is also qualified for voting thank you thank you so much so both speakers are qualified for timing thank you so much uh, th there is a poll so request all of you to submit their polls well so moving back to our topic we have seen the brief history of the blockchain and what it is uh i hope you are able to see my shared screen yeah thank you so blockchain is a distributed ledger that is completely open to everyone the most important part property of blockchain is actually it is impossible to change once a record is entered or record it's recorded it's almost impossible to change so how it it works let's take a close look at the individual block so individual block i hope you are able to see my screen individual block has got data hash and hash of the previous block these are the key three parameters has been stored on the every block let's see what data contains so data will contain as per the use case of the uh, blockchain so if blockchain is being used for cryptocurrency then data will be the the uh, details of the senders receivers and the amount of bitcoin will be stored as a part of data now let's look at what contains the hash so typically whenever you say hash hash is unique to that block whatever has been contained data and other parameters contained of this uh, in the block after that the hash of the block is created you can say the hash will be the fingerprint of that block if something changes within the block the hash will also going to be changed so in short the hash will be used to track the changes in the detect the changes in the block and if the block a hash is changed then that is not a same block as a previous one that is no longer the same person as we can say the fingerprint change the person change similarly hash is change that means block is also change and the third part data we have seen the data we have seen the hash and the next part third is the hash of the previous block the third uh, element is a blockchain is a hash of the previous block that is that's how the effectively it creates a chain of the block and this technique makes the blockchain secure now let's see how the making the chain of the block makes it secure now let's take an example let's we have these three blocks block number 1 2 and 3 of course they are having their own hash and the hash of the previous block so essentially you can see it over here the block number 3 is pointing to the block number 2 and block number 2 is pointing to the block number 1 now this block number 1 is a special block because that is a first block and we call it as genesis block because that is a first block it cannot point to the previous block so now let's see how it protects when there is someone try to tamper the block so for example someone try to tamper block number 2 once you tamper the block number 2 it hash will change hash value will change and subsequently they effectively the following block will become also invalid because they are no longer holding the valid hash of the previous block and that's how whole chain become invalid and that's how it is being protected i hope you understand this however 
but using hash is not enough to prevent the tampering. Why? Because nowadays computers are so fast that they can recalculate the hash of the all subsequent block in few seconds. The thousands and hundreds and thousands of hashes will be can be recalculated within a few seconds. So essentially, what will happen is that effectively you can tamper the block. You can recreate the hash of that block and subsequent all the block, and you can make your blockchain valid. Now, how to mitigate this issue? Now, to mitigate this issue, there is a concept called proof of work in the blockchain. The proof of work is nothing but it is actually slowing down the creation of the new block. So what they will do it uh, in Bitcoin, it takes around 10 minutes to calculate the proof of work. Proof of work is nothing but it's a mathematical calculation given to the every node whenever they are, they have to do that mathematical calculation, then, then only they can add the new block in the blockchain. So that's how the, you, the with this mechanism, it's hard to tamper the block uh, blockchain because if you tamper the block, you'll have to tamper the block, you have to recalculate the hash of the all the blocks, and then you have to do the proof of work for all the following blocks, and which is very time consuming. So with the security of hashing, and with the security of the proof of work, the whole blockchain system is secure. There is another way, <clears throat> being the distribution nature of the blockchain, blockchain is secure itself, being a distribution. It's not a central entity to manage the change. Blockchain uses peer-to-peer -peer network and everyone is allowed to join. When someone joins the network, he gets a full copy of blockchain. So that person or that node uses a full copy of blockchain to verify the blocks, uh, whether the blocks are in order or not. So let's see how this uh, distribution network uh, or distribution architecture is useful to secure the blockchain. Now let's see what happened when someone creates a new block. So over here in the picture, you can see it's a peer to peer network, four people having three valid box, uh, uh, blocks, basically red, yellow, and green. And this gray box, uh, block is created newly. Once this gray blocks is been created, it has been sent to all the uh, network nodes or all the peer to peer network for verification so that they can verify the, uh, uh, the hashish and make sure that is not tampered. And if everything checks out to be correct, then they add that block in the blockchain. And of course, they'll have to do the proof of work also. Now you can see all nodes have to create a consensus. They have to agree on that block is valid. The blocks which aren't valid, they will be rejected. So this consensus actually helps or secures the blockchain overall. So <clears throat> to successfully tamper the block, you have to initially tamper the block. You have to create the hash of every subsequent block. You'll have to run the proof of work for all the blocks. And then you have to take a control of more than 50% of your peer network so that your block can become valid on the overall blockchain. So that is very, very difficult. And that's how the blockchains has been secured. Blockchain is evolving. Now, whatever we have seen is a use case of cryptocurrency in a blockchain. There are smart contracts that are also used in blockchain, uh, which is used for NFTs. We'll see in, in subsequent uh, sessions. Blockchains can also use for storing medical records in notary and even for collecting the taxes. So with it, with this, I will take a pause over here. How blockchain is used in NFTs and what are the other use cases? We'll cover it in subsequent sessions. I will take a pause here for the table topic session. I hope you, uh, you are not feeling it uh, too much technical or something like that. They must uh, post the post must of the day. The don't tech guys. <laughs> so uh, let's move on to the second session of today's to provide us that is table topic to provide us with the challenge of today's uh, table topic. We have Toastmaster Ritik is again our young dynamic uh, tech, techie guy.
So uh, let me hand over, please help me welcoming the table topic master of today's uh, session, Toastmaster Rithik. Over to you for table topic session. Um, thank you, Toastmaster of the day. So uh, first of all, I welcome everyone to the table topic session. So in this session, what we will be doing, uh, so I'll be giving you a topic in which you need to speak impromptly. So you won't be aware about the topic. And uh, that's where all the magic starts. And uh, in every day, like in our day, uh, whenever we speak to somebody, we, we are not aware like what we, we are, what we are going to speak. We need to speak impromptly. So that's the same thing we are going to do in the same in the session. And uh, I have a couple of uh, topics with me. Okay. So let's start this session. Uh, before starting the session, uh, I would like to ask timer for the time uh, for the timing guidelines. Uh, timer, Toastmaster Parimal, over to you. Thank you, Rite. Uh, table topic speeches are for one to two minutes. I will show green card at one minute. I will show yellow card at one and a half minute. And I will show red card at two minutes. Uh, there is a grace period of 30 seconds, either of side. Minimum qualifying time is one minute. Thank you. Back to Ritik. Thank you, Timer. So, uh, uh, first of all, like, whoever wants to go first, they can raise their hands. So, today there won't be anything like a random pick or something. So, yeah. If you, uh, if you want to go ahead, then please raise your hand. Okay. So, the first uh, table topic speaker we have, that is Toastmaster Ajay. So, uh, can a Zoom master spotlight Toastmaster Ajay on the Zoom screen? Okay. So, um, okay. So, Toastmaster Ajay, uh, the topic for you is technology is good or evil. Technology is good or evil. Evil, uh, over to you, Toastmaster Ajay. Thank you so much, Table Topic Master Ritik. Technology is good or evil. Of course, technology is good, not evil. <laughs> Without technology, we cannot communicate. Without technology, we cannot get the forecasting report from the uh, med department. Without technology, your flights cannot depart from one place to other. There are many examples I have. Technology is, of course, uh, it's important uh, in today's generation or in today's life. Without technology, we cannot move forward. Technology is must and technology will keep growing now or in the future also. As you said, technology is good or evil. I must say technology is also evil if it's used in a wrong phase, if it's used in some uh, corrupted software, like you can say in the virus in the computer. A virus is a, not a airy insect. It is just a software. It is just a corrupted software which destroy your computer and it get malfunctioning and it is spread to other computers. It is the same way, like in human being, in our life, in our body. If a virus comes, we have to go doctor and then he give medicines or antibiotic. Then the and uh, with medicines, all our diseases get get rid of. In the same way, if technology used in the artificial intelligence in the wrong way, it can be dangerous. Or robots can be deployed in a war footing country. In place of humans, if robots are used. Just think about it. What will going to happen in the future? What will going to happen? What will going to happen for the country? It will be disasters. It will be crumble. Yeah, technology is good and it will in all the phases. Over to you, table topic master. Thank you, Toastmaster Jay. Uh, it sounded like a diplomat answer. You were between yes and no, and you're giving the reason for both. Like why it's yes, why it's no. So since I'm in the technology, so I have to give a diplomatic answer. Yeah, that indeed I accept it. So uh, that was a great answer. And you described why it's yes and why it's no. And yeah, yeah the technology can be evil and good both because the future is a, a very uh, 
like very unpredictable for us so we can't define how it will, how it will be going to us going to, going for us okay so who wants to go next now okay so toastmaster kedar wants to go ahead okay so uh, can zoom master spotlight toastmaster kedar okay so now toastmaster kedar is on the uh, spotlight so the topic uh, for you toastmaster kedar is uh, technology is best when it brings people together technology is best when it brings people together over to you toastmaster kedar okay so am i audible perfectly yeah okay so this is my very first uh, table topic so i hope i don't crumble under pressure so technology uh, is good when it brings people oh, sorry i forgot the topic can you just repeat yes i'll reiterate it the topic is technology is best when it brings people together technology is best when it brings people together over to you. okay yeah so uh, technology i think yes i uh, agree with that that uh, technology is best when it brings people together for example we all are together despite being in our homes so we are meeting in a virtual setting which is like technology has brought us together so in a way uh, we are having this meeting because uh, technology has enabled it and at the same time uh, technology can also bring together people for the wrong reasons as well like we have all these protests and all which go on people use twitter and you know they are influenced by twitter influenced by instagram you know if you follow certain accounts on twitter if you follow certain political accounts on instagram so you will see all these leftists uh, posting on instagram or all the rightists posting on instagram so accordingly your view points are getting influenced and you know accordingly you might uh, uh, be a part of all these protests unknowingly and you know your uh, opinions are getting influenced and as a result uh, it's not uh, great overall for the uh, nation or for your well being as as uh, uh, as a human being so uh, yeah i think uh, it makes sense to say that uh, again i would also go by the diplomatic way because there is no Uh, right or wrong answer for this uh, but uh, overall i feel that technology is a double edged sword it can be used in a good way it can be used in a bad way like what we see uh, in this russia ukraine war technology has been used uh, in a negative manner and at the same time we are meeting in toastmasters virtually which is a positive thing so uh, technology overall has uh, is, is a double edged sword so that's about it thank you um thank you toastmaster kedar yeah, it sounded really great like uh, you see it again in a diplomatic way both uh, it is doing good thing and doing bad thing as well okay so let's move to the next uh, table topic speaker so if somebody wants to go ahead they can raise their hand otherwise i'll pick okay so we had toastmaster brijesh Okay. Uh, can Zoom Master spotlight Toastmaster Bridges on the screen? Bridges okay. need to turn on his video for that. Ah, uh, hey, yeah, Vishal. Actually, I've turned on my video, but I I think there's something wrong with the Zoom, so it's showing a black screen. Ah, okay. uh, yeah. Uh, apologies. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, ah, uh, so the the topic for you, Toastmaster Bridges, is. Uh, ideal use of phone ideal use of phone uh, ideal use of phone ideal use of phone uh, over to you toastmaster vijesh yeah uh, thank you toastmaster rithik uh, so the topic being ideal use of phone uh, like uh, if you look at technology you know a mobile phone is is an invention of technology uh, uh, what will be an ideal use uh, you know it will depend from person to person uh, uh, ideal usage for someone who is a social media influencer would be to you know actually create content and keep on spending time on social media apps like instagram or facebook or twitter and you know uh, uh, 
keep on publishing his content and get get his followers on and uh, try to use that as a medium for for his lifestyle uh, for his uh, earnings but uh, someone else you know someone else who is a student uh, ideal usage for him will be completely different as a student uh, the ideal usage of phone would be to actually go go to youtube or probably go to course educational websites like coursera udemy and learn content which will you know help him uh, li uh, listen to uh, to the topics which he is interested in and probably understand them well so so today we had toastmaster of the day walter sir you know he's explaining us about blockchain uh, that's a ideal use of technology for all of us because uh, we are uh, getting to introduce to how blockchain works how nft works and uh, that's that's enlightenment for us uh, so uh, it varies from person to person uh, now i'll not call it uh, uh, that there is a clear cut path but if you are aware about your goals if you are about aware about your targets you know as a speaker pointed out in the very first topic the power of habits if i'm aware about my goal you know i need to design my habit my schedule accordingly and that's how i'll be using the phone ideally uh, if we you know are not not following that path or if you are not able to design it uh, then then our lives are uh, basically goals will like will be crumbled you know reaching our goals so that's it uh, table topics master rithik uh, thank you toastmaster brijesh so it was a very uh, very uh, complete table topic i would say because table topic speech i would say because you uh, told us like how every age group uh, finds it uh, ideal for them so that was indeed a good uh, table topic speech so who wants to go ahead uh, do we have time for the next table topic or uh, yeah we, we do have it? time we have a guest also maybe you want to rithik take up to start okay. the guest so okay let me search who is the new guest okay uh, ajit uh, yes ajit ajit uh, Do you want to turn on your camera? Or would you like to go for the table topic? Yeah, we can go it. I'm not sure, but it's time. Yeah. Okay. So the table topic for you is, what is your favorite social media platform and why? What is your uh, favorite social media platform and why? Over to you, Toastmaster Jeet. Okay. So social media uh, platform. If you talk about the my favorite, uh, it is all learning. Uh, 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 the application like the udemy the linkedin uh, the other the other thing and uh, if you uh, uh, these are the very like uh, during the pandemic situation and all those stuff uh, we are uh, were not meeting uh, in person so that was very helpful uh, for the learning any new topics any new technology uh, connecting uh, with the people also while while discussing and uh, they're reading their blogs and everything Uh, so these are the my uh, favorite uh, uh, applications thank you okay that was indeed a, a great choice on the social media platforms as you described you like more linkedin or other social media platform okay so who wants to go for the next table topic okay our most reliable toast master vishal uh can zoom master please spotlight uh, toast master vishal on the zoom window he himself is the zoom master sorry vishal <laughs> okay so the topic for you is um how do you see the future of technology in the next 10 years how do you see the future of technology in the next 10 years over to you toast master vishal thank you table topic master how do i see the future of technology in the next 10 years i think in today's uh, speech since technology has been discussed so much i think this makes it a lot easier in the sense that in future definitely we'll see a lot of cryptocurrencies wherein instead of uh, transacting with uh, a currency like rupee we would be talking okay how many uh, cryptocurrencies do i owe you or something like that and also in terms of artificial intelligence wherein uh, so much of machine thinking is uh, getting implemented in ways of algorithm wherein uh, a human dependency on decision making is actually going to go away and we'll have robots take decisions for us 
so it's going to be very interesting because we haven't really explored that particular area and uh, yeah robots can actually make good decisions than humans in certain aspects but uh, again i i don't think we have too much of uh, data as evidence to prove that so future is definitely technology driven and i think i would definitely like to see some robots taking up uh, roles uh, roles of doing some basic chores that we do in the household at least like uh, uh, doing the dishes and the cleaning and everything Def that would definitely uh, give us some time off to do uh, other productive work and uh, yeah i think even in terms of uh, internet i think the next uh, next big thing that they are talking about is i think web 3 or something and uh, it will be very interesting to see i think we just need to keep learning and keep adapting to what technology keeps keeps coming up right so yeah just be uh, in a very just be very open minded just go in that mode wherein we will we really adapt ourselves to learn unlearn and relearn so with this i pass it back to you table topic master ritik indeed uh, you described how the next 10 years will be looking for the technological perspective and uh, yeah the toastmaster of the day volters theme of the day has helped us uh, to describe it more beautifully yeah that was a great uh, okay so does somebody want to go for the next table topic okay we already had the president okay so can zoom master spotlight our president uh, sarika okay so the topic for you is i'm not sure uh, on this are you more of a social media person or a non social media person and why are you more of a social media person or a non social media person over to you president thank you table topic master are you a more social media person i wasn't a more social media person but as you have to adapt to the technology this is called digital adoption which i mentioned you know earlier so i think now i want to become a more social media person because the perception actually earlier i used to feel why people just post on social media what is it about revealing the your entire life what you eat what you wear, wear what you walk and where you walk and where you go so i, will, I used to always wonder that why people put on social media and then came a time that why not so so your you, you change your thoughts change and similarly my thoughts also change that i want to become more socially active because now to market yourself social media plays a very important role if i have to market myself in my corporate world also or anywhere social media plays a very important role and i have this actually this year's resolution was that you know i will start posting more on instagram and uh, social media platforms and i will try to uh, put forth my thoughts however i just tried very minimal but not too much but yeah this year's resolution is that i want to post more so i'm not a social media person but I want to be a social media person i want to go with the flow and you have to adopt the technology i have to digitally adopt myself and change so yeah over to you to master table topic master with it yeah uh, thank you uh, president sarika so indeed uh, that's the reality like i i was i'm also not a more of a social media person but uh, i adopted this from my back in college days so yeah that is something which we have to do because the whole world is going with it so if you want to be get updated then we need to go through with go, go with the flow okay so do we have time for the tab next table topic uh, uh, the last one you can take you want to take okay so who wants to go ahead for the next table topic i think i we should pick a toast master the day like he he brought the blockchain topic <laughs> toast yeah. master what about you say yeah 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 i'm ready yeah okay go put ahead. him on the spotlight uh, sa put him on the spotlight okay okay so the topic uh, for you is how many hours uh, do you spend on your mobile and do you think it is good or bad how many hours uh, do you spend on your mobile and do you think it is good or bad over to you toast master today Walter. thank you thank you so much uh, so uh, really speaking i am not tracking how many hours i am spending on the other thing once there was a one application i think in samsung which was showing these uh, some application which was uh, showing the 
and it was it was shocking for me that I'm spending so much of time, like maybe a three hours, three and a half hours, and also. So, uh, <clears throat> but if you ask me whether it's a good or bad, it's it's not good or bad. It's how consciously you are using it. The purpose is important. So, whole technology is not uh, bad or good. How you are using it is important. Your intention is important. It's not a, a just just a quick example. Uh, if knife takes more life or save more life. So if you look at the knife, you always say knife will be used for the stabbing, but then it's not. Uh, the knife has saved more life on operation table, actually. So if you look at that perspective, uh, it's, it doesn't matter whether you spend how much time you you spend how your time is very important, and that's uh, where I think uh, I really feel like. Uh, whether it's a mobile devices, whether it's an internet, or whether it's a anything else, uh, the purpose and how you are leveraging that technology to push on the good thing to the, your society or community, that is very important. And if you started using uh, this uh, for this purpose, all good people come together, then I think technology will do the wonder for us. And that's the power of technology. That's it from my mind. Over to you. Thank you, to us, Master Day. You, it looked like you were very prepared for this topic. If uh, <laughs> topic, Master, we could have picked you on the table. <laughs> okay. Indeed, that was true. Like the, the story you told on the knife, it can be used for the operations to save the life or even it can be used to kill the people as well. So indeed, I the same perspective, like the glass is half uh, empty or half filled. So both the perspective you gave us really well. So. Indeed, that was a great table topic speech. Uh, I think now we should wrap the table topic session. Uh, uh, Saab, timer. Can you confirm on this? Okay, so let's wrap yeah. the table topic session. Yeah. And uh, I would like to ask uh, timer to present the timing report on the table topics. Over to you, timer. Thank you, Ritik. Uh, uh, TM Ajay took two minutes, 12 seconds. TM Kedar took 2 minutes 20 seconds. TM Bridges took 2 minutes 5 seconds. TM Vissal took 2 minutes 8 seconds. Uh, TM Sarika took 1 minute 30 seconds. And TM Volter took 1 minute 30 seconds. So all they are uh, qualified for voting. Guest Ajit took 40 seconds. So he, he is disqualified. Back to uh, Ritik. Uh, thank you, Timer Toastmaster Parimal. Okay, so now I'll hand over the stage back to Toastmaster day, the Toastmaster of the day. So over to you, Toastmaster of the day, Walter. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hrithik. Uh, thank you for a uh, wonderful table topic session. So coming back to, oh, yeah, I think a poll has been uh, published. So request everyone to cast their votes through the polling. So thank you. Uh, is polling is over? Uh, yes, we are done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, dear fellow Toastmasters and my dear guest, uh, we have seen the blockchain, how it works, uh, the brief history of block blockchain, what block contains, data, hash, and hash of previous block. Hash is uh, keeping the uh, tracking the tampering of the data. How the uh, having the previous block. Uh, ensures that next block becomes invalid and the, what the proof of work is used for and uh, then finally the how the distribution architecture helps to secure the blockchain itself now moving on to the one another use case of the blockchain that is the smart contract which is using non-fungible token i think this topic once covered by toastmaster Ritik. And just quickly uh, explain you what is a non-fungible token non-fungible token means something that is not exchangeable for other another atom because it's a unique its properties are unique for example one piece of art cannot be equal to another uh, because each has got unique properties the similarly if you have designer clothes or if you have got something customized vehicle or something like that which is unique in the nature it cannot be exchanged for another 
However, fungible atoms, uh, you can quick, easy example is like uh, our currency notes. You can exchange 100 rupees currency note for maybe a, another 100 rupees currency note or maybe a 250 rupees currency note. So those are fungible, those can be exchanged easily. Those are not unique basically, okay? So what's the NFTs are? NFTs are tokens present on the blockchain representing the ownership of these unique atoms. I repeat, blockchain, on the blockchain, NFTs are representing the ownership of these unique atoms, nothing else. It represents the uh, ownership. So how it is helpful? So tracking the ownership of digital atom, digital asset is very, uh, uh, a little tricky because you can easily copy it and distribute the digital asset effortlessly. So how can you prove the ownership of something which everyone is having the identical copy of that? So NFT is used over here to resolve this issue. NFTs are nothing but a smart contract that stored on the blockchain. The contract stored the unique properties of item, keeps track of the current and previous owner, and NFTs can be programmed if required for to distribute the royalty to its owner whenever every time it exchanges the ad. So now let's imagine you are having a digital art, a JPG file. You can create NFT out of this. NFT or token which represents your art, your JPG file will contain information. What information will be stored on the blockchain? It's like token name, symbol of your file and hash of the file and hash of the previous block will be stored and you being the artist become the owner of that NFT. Okay. Now you can sell that token by creating the transaction on blockchain. And you all, we all know blockchain make sure that this information is never tampered. Okay. Blockchain is secured enough though. It can keep a track of the ownership. It also allows you to track who is a current owner and how much amount is has been sold in the past. That information is also <clears throat> recorded on the NFTs. Now over here, which is, this is very important to note that your digital art is not stored on the blockchain. Only attributes are stored such as hash of the file, token name, symbol, or you can optionally have the link of the file, but not actually the art. Okay. So now here NFT becomes weird. Whenever you buy some NFTs that represent the artwork, actually you did get a copy of it. Most of the time you can download it from the, uh, some link, free link or somewhere. But whatever you get is that NFT only represents that you are the owner of that record. Okay, the, uh, that art. So it's only the track, the ownership, not the actual artwork. So NFTs can be used to collect, uh, used to sell the concert tickets, domain name, real estate, or basically it is required for the unique uh, things where you required to have the proof of ownership. So whenever there is a required to have the proof of ownership, the NFTs can be used. For example, the founder of Twitter sold his first tweet as an NFT. So is, as of today also, anyone can see his tweet on his profile. But one person is owning that and who he has paid over $2.9 million for it. I can make NFT of this video and you can buy it and become owner of this video, even if it, even if it is available free of free to watch everyone. So NFTs is nothing but the, only the ownership tracking. Then why these NFTs are worth millions? Well, it depends how much people are willing to pay. It's demand and supply rule applies over here, nothing else. So be careful, expensive NFTs can become worthless. No one is ready to buy it, no one is willing to buy it. With this, I have come to almost end of the session. I will stop here for uh, evaluation session. So over here, I will like to uh, 
start the third session that is general evaluation and for the general evaluation we have the young and dynamic leader our past president uh, toastmaster glen so general evaluation is a session where it's a, a round of constructive feedback is given to each speaker and the overall meeting conducts is also getting evaluated and for that uh, please help me welcoming the general evaluator of today's meeting no other than our past president toastmaster gling over to you toastmaster gling thank you so much uh, toastmaster walter for that warm welcome uh, today i'll be playing the role of the general evaluator like you mentioned and uh, as part of being the general evaluator there are three duties that i need to perform uh, one being calling upon the speech evaluators two calling upon the tag team and then lastly i'll be sharing my report on the entire meeting to get this session started uh, let me now call upon toastmaster joy so that he can share his feedback for toastmaster sandeep toastmaster joy my call for you please thank you uh, ji toastmaster glen all right toastmaster sandeep you know sometimes a technical glitch can be a good thing and why i'm saying that is because without the video without the entire body language i had to focus on your voice and you also had to depend on your voice to be able to you know grab your audience's attention and i must tell you you have a very good voice it's very friendly it's pleasing it's very tranquil you also have a good command over the language you did not use any sophistication it was nice and simple which is the entire idea of communication um also you didn't come across as somebody who's just read something and then you know try and repackage it embellish it dress it up and then pass it along uh you had great depth of knowledge simply because you've internalized these habits you've practiced them you've tried them you know it works and therefore you were able to you know in a way become an evangelist of these habits um as far as uh, the entire structure is concerned it was it was very good it was quite professional in fact you started with a quote um although that quote you know over the years has been attributed to a whole lot of leaders from mahatma gandhi to even margaret thatcher so that's debatable uh, on the origin of that uh, quote but nevertheless it was a good build up uh, to segue into you know your topic which is the power of habits yeah you interspersed your speech with a whole lot of personal examples and uh, that again drives home the point that that you know the entire uh, entire uh, habit formation actually works as far as um, as far as uh, my suggestions go one is uh, you know you'll have to go ahead and give credit where credit is due so you went ahead and mentioned a couple of books one is the power of habit and second is atomic habits so you'll have to go ahead and mention the author names as well that happens for anything which is like a book or a newsletter or any kind of white paper that is one i think it was uh, it was a very honest miss because you went ahead and gave credit to mahatma gandhi on the very uh, opening quote that you had uh, that's one second is of course uh, i mean your title was was the title of the book by charles duhigg maybe you could have gone ahead and modified that a little bit because at the end of the day uh, you know the entire speech came across like a book summary absolutely um, yeah and uh, you know it, it was like a motivational podcast so so it, it sounded like you know i'm sitting and listening to maybe an interview with charles duhigg or maybe even uh, james clear by the way who are authors of these two books that you've gone ahead and mentioned um another important suggestion that i had was uh, you almost ran out of time sandeep so you were pretty close to that seven and a half minute uh, timeline and um, you know when it comes to habits right if you do a google search i'm sure you'll find millions of links um even as far as books are concerned okay within the entire uh, genre of self help you'll find about 70 75% of the books are on habits from the classic seven habits of highly effective people to even the recent stuff by ankur varel could do epic shit it, it all talks about habits so there's plenty of information yeah and i think um, given you know the kind of concepts that you covered in your speech you gave in to the temptation that i want to tell them about smart i want to tell them about tesla i want to tell them about my excel sheet i want to tell them about the q routine reward loop i want to tell them about a whole lot of things and and that is something that you'll have to go ahead and curb you'll have to temper those temptations 
simply because it's just seven and a half minutes. So you might want to go ahead and grab any one concept and then go ahead and elaborate on that concept as much as possible. Okay, so what was missing in your speech was the power of the pause. Okay, your, your brain takes a while to click, you know, the light bulb doesn't really go on, you know, especially when you've gone ahead and shared something uh, which makes a lot of meaning. Yeah, so the impact doesn't come when you keep talking and talking and talking. So uh, there has to be some pause. And, um, you know, when you actually learn music, that's, that's what they kind of teach you first. You know, it is a silence between the notes that actually creates the music. So that silence was not available today between your speech. And that's the uh, only feedback uh, that I have for you today. I'm actually looking forward. This was a more informative speech, um, but I'm actually looking forward to a more personalized speech and a more personalized message from you, Toastmaster Sandeep. So that's about it. Thank you. And back to you, GE, Toastmaster Glenn. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Joy, for that detailed evaluation. Uh, may I now please ask uh, Toastmaster Vishal uh, to share his evaluation for Toastmaster Joy. Thank you so much, uh, General Evaluator Toastmaster Glenn. So, Toastmaster Ajay, I believe you are really becoming an expert in the technology field, and I'm sure you already are being an IT manager. So, I believe you did a really good research on this specific uh, subject that uh, you gave the speech on today. I felt uh, you provided a very detailed analysis of about uh, computers, about the artificial intelligence aspect of it, and also how it affects uh, the human side with the decision making and everything. So in my opinion, I believe uh, you did pretty good in terms of doing the research. And I also felt you were like quite relaxed while you were uh, giving, giving your speech, you were taking pretty decent pauses at times as well, just to make sure that the messages was really getting absorbed uh, by the audience as well. And I believe you also sounded pretty confident uh, in your speech as well. Uh, also, you gave some really good examples about the some certain pros and cons of artificial intelligence and uh, how sometimes artificial intelligence also could be a bit dangerous. So, uh, I mean, what I would have really wanted is like, you know, since your uh, subject title also had a question mark at the end, which is essential, I would have really liked if you would have gone that extra mile to kind of give your preference as well as to like, you know, which one is essential from your perspective that would have really taken this on a, on a slightly different uh, level as well. And also one other feedback that I wanted to give you Ajay is that I found you a, a uh, shuffling quite a bit on your on your seat as well. So uh, maybe if you are more comfortable to maybe stand and deliver your speech, that will also give a pretty good impact uh, to the audience that, you know, uh, because sometimes like, you know, shuffling from, I mean, it may just happen unconsciously, but there is something that I observed and bit of a feedback that you could also uh, take away from this. And uh, also what I feel is uh, to challenge yourself and take this to the next level. It would have been really good if you could have added one of one or two like you know personal experiences that you could have shared. It could be something in, of in the social media domain, or it could have been uh, in some of the examples that you shared, uh, like you know on Google Maps as well. Uh, sometimes like you know how it could have been like you know frustrating, just too many pop-ups coming on your phone. So I think a bit of that personal touch would have really taken this on a new level but nevertheless Ajay like fantastic a job with the speech as well as uh, so just with a few modifications as I mentioned from my perspective you could you're really doing well and you can really go to the next level so with this uh, great delivery and I pass it back to our general evaluator Toastmaster Glenn thank you so much Toastmaster Vishal um... May I uh, now, and I know I keep doing this, it's my bad, uh, but may I uh, now, now call upon um, the timer, Toastmaster Parimal, uh, so that he can share the timer's report. So again, my bad there, I didn't call upon him earlier, but uh, since both of you are established evaluators, I hope you, you know, let that go. Anyway, Toastmaster Parimal. Yeah, thank you, TM Glenn. Uh, TM Vishal took two minutes, 58 seconds. 
and TM Joy took four minute twenty second. So now up to you. <laughs> you decide <laughs> to qualify or not. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So since it's my bad, I think I should let uh, let let both of them you know be a part of it if the president of course is okay. And uh, can we also have the polls? Uh, polling is done. Thank you. Thanks so much, Toastmaster Vishal. Okay, now we'll go ahead and uh, we'll move to the second part of the evaluation, which is the report for the tag team. For that, uh, I will go about and call upon, uh, firstly, the R counter, because we already have the timer reports that's taken care of. Call upon the R counter, Toastmaster. Thank you, Toastmaster Glenn. Uh, I hope I'm audible. So I'll directly start with uh, presenting the report. Please let me know if my screen is clearly visible. Yes. Great. Uh, so for the personal, I'll pause the screen for a while. You could uh, look at your respective names uh, to know that where are, where do I stand in terms of using the filler words or R words? I'll just pause for 30 seconds to for you to look at your respective mm -hmm. and then I can the remarks were for my personal reference, but feel free to refer to them. And if you have uh, anything is not clear, you can ask me as well. So we could see a connection between the time that a person speaks and filler words. So that is one important consideration uh, while we are evaluating or looking at this report. The other factor that came to my mind was as a group or as a team that works together, the yellow one, that is the total time each of us spends. Maybe as a group, something that we need to improve is usage of R. And the second would be say so. There are, if we see others, there are a lot of words like you know, also, and which are used. Currently, that is not part of the filler word, but it's counted under others. So as next time onwards, as a group, we could be a little more conscious in using our, or the common words that we all end up using. So this is how it looks like. But I would really like to appreciate I, one is uh, Toastmaster Ajay. In the prepared speeches, there were hardly any filler words that were used. Uh, similarly, Glenn, while you were also talking, the filler words were to the minimum. Same was the case with Joy when he presented for around four minutes. So that is something highlight and try using in, a, in our own speeches. Thank you. Back to General Thank you so much, Toastmaster Avni. Now, uh, moving on to Toastmaster Brijesh, who was, who is the grammarian for the day. Toastmaster Brijesh, maybe please have your report. Yeah. Thank you, General Evaluator Glenn. Uh, yeah. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yeah. So I'll move on to the evaluation. Uh, before I move on, I'd just like to thank Avni. Uh, you know, the way you, you evaluated it and presented it structurally, I think that's something for all of us to learn, uh, will definitely help us keep track of things and improve on. Uh, yeah, uh, moving on. Uh, so uh, I'll start with the word of the day. Uh, so we had many, many examples uh, of that being used. Uh, Toastmaster Sandeep in his speech, he used it. Uh, even Toastmaster Ajay used it. Uh, Toastmaster of the day, Walter, sir, uh, he used it as well. Uh, and he has requested Sandeep to share the Excel sheet. You know, we can use that to improve our habits. Uh, uh, now coming, uh, moving on to uh, good usages. Uh, so uh, six pillars of life, 
moot question of Toastmaster Sandeep. He was the first speaker. He's used it. Uh, evaluator Joy, uh, repackage it, embellish it. Uh, a good usage of uh, adjective uh, and uh, simile. Uh, then uh, Toastmaster of the day, Walter Sir. Again, he he kind of used proof of work. Uh, presiding officer, uh, he used, you change your thoughts, uh, you change, you change your thoughts. Uh, then uh, we, had Toastmaster, uh, we had Toastmaster Kedar, he used double-edged sword. So good examples of uh, grammar and English usage. A uh, few of bad usages. Uh, so I've seen a lot of places, you know, we, we talk in plurals, but we are not using the correct prefixes, you know. So use huge variety, like uses huge variety. Uh, keep growing i would say keeps growing uh, uh and uh one more point uh it the word use was do you really uh i think should have been have you really uh since it was uh something which had happened in past so yeah that's it toastmaster general evaluator glenn uh Thank you so much, Toastmaster British. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Toastmaster British. Um, all right, we'll move ahead and we'll talk about the third segment, which is basically the general evaluators report. So my report for today. Uh, now, firstly, I think uh, we started the meeting at around 11.3, uh, but of course there were a uh, you know, couple of people joining in a little late and things like that. Uh, so if we can, I'm not, I'm not sure if we actually did, I did not actually check the WhatsApp, but try and put in um, a, a message in the group saying that the meeting is beginning and you know have people join in on time. So maybe that's something that uh, we would need to enforce. And, uh, uh, so yeah, so that's just one. Uh, now with regards to the Sergeant at Arms, so Sergeant at Arms is Vishal. Vishal, I think you are really enthusiastic when you start the entire presentation here today. Uh, so your instructions are really clear, which is again, something that's very good. And it's always nice to see you uh, at the start of the meeting in a nice and pleasant voice uh, up here. So good job with the Sergeant Vitam uh, role that we took. Toastmaster Sareka. Uh, so Toastmaster Sareka, I think uh, again, a nice and warm welcome. Uh, of course, there was just one guest in the meeting today. Uh, and I think he was too introduced. Uh, you did come up with a nice, uh, digital adoption message okay uh, now when it comes to the presiding officer role and i can say from personal experience that it does get a little challenging especially when you're trying to come up with a message and then you're trying to also link that message to the theme of the meeting right uh, so uh, i think you did a very nice and neat job today uh, uh, with the uh, presiding officer role, but I definitely echo your sentiments and see uh, that there, how tricky this particular role can be, right? Which a lot of people don't really get until you actually start doing that particular role. So uh, that's uh, what I wanted to say about the presiding officer uh, role. Moving on to the Toastmaster of the day, uh, Toastmaster Walter. Uh, I think uh, from today onwards, I'm going to call you Professor Walter. Okay, now the reason for that being, uh, you actually reminded me about uh, my college days, you know, wherein I used to sit through class and uh, just not understand anything that's going on in the session. <laughs> okay. Sorry uh, for that. <laughs> this, no, no, that's not your fault. That's mine, right? So, uh, so, so that's why I said back to college days, right? Of course, there were many other interesting things to do in college. But apart from that, um your session was very detailed right um and i really like to see the presentation as well that you brought up because that did simplify things a little uh, at least for me um when it comes to uh, these type of sessions and normally whatever sessions you do are, are very knowledgeable and you know very intellectual so uh, <laughs> not everyone in the audience is as intellectual right? Uh, and sometimes you have to bring it down to the level of the audience, right? Um, a couple of ways or suggestions wherein you can go about and do that. 
uh, is maybe uh, you could have engaged the role players, the different role players, in asking them their opinion of the, about the blockchain and things like that. That way, I think it would have become more of a interactive session wherein you would have like two way communication, right? Uh, then, um, if you look at this entire uh, EMOD role, right? I think uh, now today, obviously, we have a few number of speakers and things, uh, but uh, typically you are given like 12 to 30 minutes to do this entire session of a DMOD. And uh, what we tend to do is we try to crunch in a lot of information in, in those 12 minutes. Uh, now, sometimes the audience is not looking for that much of information. Uh, so maybe you want to break it down and just give what is what you think is essential. Um, because when we had you know, giving all that information, we want to share everything that we know. But again, like I said, you may want to bring it down to the level of the audience. Overall, uh, a very detailed and interesting session. And I definitely look forward to a lot more. But if I'm going to be in class, I'm going to be calling you professor. Right? So uh, that was for the TMOD of today. Uh, now, uh, we'll talk about the speech and uh, the the speeches and the speech evaluators. Again, I think Toastmaster Sandeep, uh, you had a good speech, uh, very informative on habits. And uh, Toastmaster Choi, of course, a flawless evaluation. So nothing to add over there. Uh, Toastmaster Ajay, uh, Toastmaster Ajay, I think, be it the speech or be it even the table topics, I think you're making extreme, very good use of uh, this table topic. Uh, I'm sorry, of this uh, Toastmaster platform. Uh, so it's a commendable job, um, you know, right? I, I, I remember, I think I think even I was the evaluator for a couple of maybe your icebreaker or something like back in the day. But uh, I see that progress and uh, I'll just say, keep it up. Uh, you, you are doing very, very well, okay? Uh, nothing to add when it comes to the speech or the evaluation for you. I think uh, that's been taken care of, it was must be sure. Moving on to Toastmaster Ritik, who is our table topic master for the day. Uh, where is he? Okay, so Ritik, firstly, nice, uh, you know, avatar today. <laughs> uh, I think uh, all of us were kind of a little uh, surprised to see that. Now, uh, anyway, thanks for bringing that back on, okay? Uh, but a uh, little bit of a feedback, honestly, I am not really sure if that fits into a Toastmaster session. Okay, uh, so we'd prefer to see you rather than the avatar, but yeah, for the sake of fun, I think here and there, uh, that was a, again a nice, pleasant surprise. Uh, the table topics itself, I think, uh, were relatable to the theme, uh, to everybody, so they were nice and crisp. Uh, I think almost everybody were able to speak for the entire duration that a table topic uh, session is, which is one and a half to two minutes. Uh, so, good job with the table topic session overall. Yeah. Now, uh, coming to okay, coming to the tag team, uh, Toastmaster Parimal. I think your instructions were clear, and you did do a tremendous job. I think um, your uh, timer screen was as your background. There was absolutely no glitches or challenges. So overall, good job with the timers role today, Toastmaster Parima. Uh, Toastmaster Avni, uh, nice and innovative. You even asked questions um, and tried to explain what this entire R counter role is all about. Uh, you even gave us like a little bit of an intention setting which is basically for us to be mindful when we are speaking. So I think uh, overall, there was a lot of innovation here today. Okay, And uh, when you gave your report as well, it was a nice and detailed report structured on screen. You gave people sufficient time to go through where they made errors and so on. Uh, and then after that, uh, you even explained like, okay, this is, you know, the hours and the time gap and, and Obviously, the longer you speak, the more you're going to go about and create or uh, basically have filler words. So thank you, Toastmaster Avni, for that. Uh, moving on to uh, Toastmaster Brijesh, uh, who 
is the grammarian, Toastmaster British Crumble. I think the word itself was uh, a, a, de a decent word for the word of the day. Um, again, some feedback over here would be uh, to display it as a banner or probably put it in to uh, the chat box, okay? Uh, I'm not sure how many people use the word of the day today, uh, but uh, again, when you put it in the chat box, you actually put it in at the time of the table topic session, uh, which again, um, you know, uh, the speakers were not, were not able to use the word of the day in their speech. So maybe this is something that anyone who's doing the grammarian role should be a little mindful of. Try to display it as a banner. Uh, or from time to time in the chat so that people are aware of it. Uh, so overall, as I would say, today was a very intellectual and interesting Sunday morning. And um, I would like to pass it back to Toastmaster Walter for the closing uh, remarks. Toastmaster Walter. Thank you. Over thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think the, the poll has been published, requested to the cast reports. Well, thank you so much, Toastmaster Glenn, for your detailed report. Um, still, I have got few more points to explain. <laughs> so nothing, uh, I am come to an end of the sessions. Uh, broadly, there are three types of blockchains, uh, public blockchain, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum. There are, again, private blockchains or consortium blockchains, which used by corporates like Hyperlegion and R3 Coda. And uh, blockchains, like there are hybrid blockchains are there, uh, there uh, like uh, Dragon Chain and all. We have seen the uh, uh, use case like cryptocurrency and, and uh, smart contract NFTs. Apart from that, uh, <clears throat> there are other application or that is getting built, leveraging the benefits of the blockchain uh, from supply chain to financial services to the identity management for gaming industry. The blockchain is being used, plan to be used. Uh, as, as I told you, like peer-to-peer -peer network use for extensively the resources for the computation of the uh, proof of work. And that's where the blockchain uh, uh, or cryptocurrency is being criticized because they consume lots of energy, lots of energy they required. And that's why the, if you see in the worldwide, so many data centers has been built on the green energy or the uh, solar energy or maybe bioenergy. So that's it from my end. Uh, with that, I have closing my today's session, the basics of blockchain. I believe uh, you understand a bit of it. Uh, uh, thank you so much for your patience. And uh, with that, I will hand over the control to the presiding officer of today's uh, meeting. That is Toastmaster, uh, Madam Toastmaster Sarika. Over to you, Toastmaster Sarika. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. This was indeed, as General Evaluator mentioned, a very intellectual, very knowledgeable session. And to add this, the table topic also had the same concept. So, you know, it was all about technology and I really enjoyed, I thoroughly enjoyed this session. <clears throat> okay, so the best of big three role player is up on, uh, the poll is up. Request everyone to please vote. Okay, <clears throat> so now as we come to the end of the meeting, First, let's hear from our guest um, any feedback about the meeting and how interesting was the meeting. So, guest Ajit, how did you find the meeting? Was it helpful? Was your motive yeah, and yeah, intention was, achieved? Sorry, yeah. So, it is very, very helpful. Uh, I learned a lot of things. I heard all the teachers uh, very consciously and take up the feedback also. It's a nice evaluation done by the evaluation team. Uh, and, uh, and also, uh, uh, Mr. Walter, sir, has given very informative session. Even I am part of the technology. Uh, so whatever I heard, uh, this is very, very important. And uh, at the end, uh, a lot of, well, the evaluation, I am also learning uh, that how the evaluation is done and what are the, the what are the mistakes or whatever the corrective action we need to take. So it is very informative. Thank you very much. Thank you, guest Ajit. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Okay, so now we come to the award ceremony. Uh, the award ceremony, uh, the award chair, can you please put up the certificates? Yeah. So 
so today uh, was a very intellectual session as everybody said uh, and it it is also a day of ties so we had actually two ties today mm -hmm. so going ahead yeah so uh, today in fact yeah we can see your screen in fact today was an amazing poll results are also amazing the best speaker goes to ajay and, and sandeep yeah. Yeah. So there was a tie between ajay and sandeep then uh table topic speaker was walter and, and vishal we have in fact two ties today Best evaluator, Best evaluator goes to, to Joy. Best auxiliary player is Ian Avni. And best big three role player is Glenn. So, yeah, that was the award ceremony. Back to you. Thank you, award chair. <coughs> Okay, so here we come at the end of the meeting. We had two ties, so that we had the best speakers in the prepared speech. We had best table topic master. Everything I think today's session was really uh, very knowledgeable. I'm going to take back a lot of things. I'm going to brief touch about the blockchain. Thank you, Toastmaster of the Walter, for you know at least get, getting that thought in our mind and. Uh, at least now we'll evaluate it more and uh, yeah i think we wound up eight minutes early so enjoy and have a happy sunday and thank you all and look forward for the next meeting